Hi everyone, Hirsch the Bookie once again, and I might have already mentioned it on my channel, but one of my main passions and interests is my interest in board games. I became addicted to this stuff about two years ago, and it's powerful shit to be addicted to. Uh, I've definitely mentioned on my channel my love of H.P. Lovecraft. He is one of my favorite authors. It might be the one guy who um, like ignited my interest and love of literature in general. And today I am reviewing something that brings together my, these two passions of mine, which is the board game Eldritch Horror. But I'm not going to give you a board game review in the canonical sense. I'm not going to talk about the mechanics of the game, how the game works, if not marginally. Um, if you're inter interested in that kind of stuff, at the end of this video and in the description box, you'll find a link to uh, the review of Eldritch Horror by Shut Up and Sit Down, which, if you ask me, is the best uh, board game reviewing website uh, in existence. What I'm going to talk about is Eldritch Horror as a storytelling engine basing, as a narrative board game. Why am I doing such a thing? First and foremost because I like to blabber about stuff I love, but also because board games such as Eldritch Horror, narrative board games such as these, are basically just the full-blown and maximalist version of the kind of interactive fiction, choose-your-own-adventure style of narrative I personally grew up with, and maybe you enjoyed too, in the 90s or in the past in general. And today, in today's world, with stuff such as House of Leaves or uh, Danielevsky is uh, the familiar too, or stuff such as Chris Ware's building stories. Those kinds of narratives of that you, you build by yourself kind of walk the line between what is actually a game or a, a piece of interactive fiction and what, what is a straight-up novel or a straight-up linear narrative. And of course, what is a storytelling board game such as this if not an engine to build stories? And of course, an engine to build stories is pretty much Umberto Eco's definition of the novel. Although Umberto Eco was also a media relativist and he would have completely disagreed with uh, re like comparing novels to games and such, let's just talk about the fucking game. A game of Eldritch Horror sees a team of investigators traveling the world on the game's gorgeous board, exploring forbidden jungles and haunted cities, fighting monsters and solving quests, and trying to prevent their enemies from summoning an ancient one, which is a demonic alien god straight out of Lovecraft's stories. If the ancient one is awakened, the good guys will have to trade blows with him, and more likely than not they'll fail and the world will get devoured. How does the narrative and the story progresses? As you walk around that beautiful board, you might or might not see behind my back through cards. When you step on a specific location, you pick a card from a certain deck of cards and you read an event that happens to you. And maybe the card tells you that you meet a monster, you see a monster in the city sewers and you have to fight it. And so you throw some dice and if you pass a test, then you defeated the monster. If you didn't, that something bad happens to you and that's it straight up and easy, isn't it? Except that not really. For a narrative game, for a game that walks the line between board game and role-playing game, Eldritch Horror is filled with rules, and some of these rules are kinda fiddly. It's not nearly as filled with rules as Arkham Horror, its predecessor, which basically was the same game, but it took place in the city of Arkham rather than on the whole world. But still, especially during your first games, you'll, you'll spend a lot of time checking the manual and cross-referencing rules to understand what what's really going on, and on the one hand this of course makes Eldritch Horror the game we all love to play, on the other hand it hinders the narrative experience in a couple of ways I'll talk about in a second. First and foremost though, this is a Lovecraftian game, I'm sure lots of people who play it and lots of people who are going to be interested in playing it will be so because they like the fiction of Lovecraft or Lovecraftian horror in general. Is this game Lovecraftian? No, I mean, it is in the sense that such as so much uh, Lovecraftian fiction and Lovecraftian games of today, it takes the notion of Lovecraftian horror, which is about the horror of ignorance and the fact that humanity is just a speckle of dust floating in the galaxy with no purpose, and from all that extracts tentacles. <laughs> this is a game about tentacles. It's a game in which you shoot entities, alien gods that uh, technically should make you mad, just looking at them, you shoot at them with a shotgun and you can actually kill them. I mean, this game actually, uh, there's the color out of space in this game, this game tells you that the color out of space is green. Basically, it should be like a color 
no one can conceive it's actually green. But that is fine, I'm totally not going to be a grumpy nerd about that, because on the one hand, a game about how life is eventually meaningless would have been kind of depressing, it's also quite fun shooting tentacle monsters with a shotgun, and also because like lots of people, lots of those people telling you Lovecraftian horror is about the uh, absurdities of the cosmos usually tend to forget that Lovecraftian fiction also has kind of a like a high level of tentacles in it. Like the green goo and horrible monsters are part of the whole package. Actually, moving on to the game, what kind of story are you telling by yourself if you're playing solo or with your friends as you you and your investigators travel around the world uh, like with portals open opening all over the place, monsters coming out of the sewers, all this kind of mad shit happening. It's the story of your investigators, of these people. The investigators are a colorful bunch of characters, colorful as in kinda stereotypical, it would have been nice if the Chinese character had been, I don't know, a dentist instead of a martial arts expert, but whatever. And the story you tell is going to be at times kind of an absurd story. It, this is kind of a game that to, in order to work you need to play it with a certain amount of irony. In Arkham Horror you had the chance to explore dreamscapes and other dimensions and the card related to those other dimensions always had this kind of absurd text that cracked the whole table up, but that was fine. You, you were like uh, exploring these places and like you read the pink tentacle is chasing you and you were like what the fuck? But that was fine because of course dreams do not really make sense and it added a, a certain amount of color to the experience. In Eldritch Horror, every kind of encounter is that kind of encounter. Maybe you are in Rome and you read a card that says, the black shirts are chasing you, and you're like, what the fuck, what did I do, what's going on? And of course, you and your friends will need to go along with the flow and, and to laugh at all that and go on with the narrative as it is presented to you by the game. If you start nitpicking and going, this doesn't make sense, you're not going to enjoy the narrative experience a lot. At times, uh, like a kind of a crazy professor who is as weak as a kitten will overpower a band of armed robbers just because he was lucky with the dice. You'll have to have a laugh about that and again go along with the flow. Some people will tell you that the story of Eldritch Horror is actually the story of the ancient one you are fighting, of this alien uh, god monster you are trying to uh, uh, prevent from waking up and devouring the world. I beg to differ, because the the one missed opportunity I found in Eldritch Horror was that you win the game by solving mysteries, basically by solving specific quests, which might be, I don't know, uh, kill a certain amount of monsters, or uh, travel to these specific locations and pass a test. But these mystery cards, these mysteries, are different from each um, ancient one you're fighting. There are several according uh, to each uh, each of the different ancient ones, but these are all pretty much the same. The flavor of these narratives, the flavor of these texts, the actual things written on it are kind of always the same. Uh, a great danger is about to wake up, it needs to be stopped. There are demons around. It's always the same fucking Lovecraftian mambo-jumbo. It could have easily been used to create an evolving story, kind of a narrative that is different according to each of the enemies you're fighting. It's not used that way, and that's a pity. So, if the game, the game aspect of the experience, uh, influences the narrative aspect so much, is the game easy? Is the game, uh, like, accessible? I think it is an easier game than Arkham Horror, if, if nothing else. It's not too difficult as a game, and one of the great things about it is that you can actually die. It is much easier here to die than in Arkham Horror, and that's completely fine, because when your investigator dies, you leave it on the board, you pick up a new investigator, and you can actually go back to the place where the previous guy died and get back his stuff, and read a very colorful passage on how he sacrificed himself to save the world, stuff like that. And that's great, because you get the... again, that helps the story a lot. It helps making you feel like you're actually telling a story, you're actually uh, experiencing this evolving narrative. In Arkham Horror, what happened was that you it was very hard to die. What happened all the time was that you either went mad or ended up in, uh, in the meadows or in the hospital. You lost most of your possessions and your clues and you basically became the village idiot and all your friends were busy like saving the world from demons while you were just trying to find a gun um, so that you could help them. It sucked. 
And this leads me to another uh, very important uh, thing that needs to be discussed about this game, also about Eldritch Horror, which is that these are games that rely heavily on randomness and on chance in order to create drama. Uh, it, you constantly feel on the edge of your seat, you constantly know that you might die at any moment because you always need to pass tests to, to roll dice and uh, like get a certain result and if you don't, bad shit is going to happen to you. This is an easy and overall good, uh, an overall decent way of creating drama but the obvious consequence of that is that in every game of Eldritch Horror, or at least in most games of Eldritch Horror, there will be that one guy who is unlucky with his dice and his game won't be as, as good as the other. His or her game will be a bit of a downer. Also, losing the game is a clear and present possibility with Eldritch Horror, and that theoretically should be fine, because of course the story you are telling is a horror story, and horror stories often have unhappy endings, often end with the monster eating everybody. And so that should be fine if eventually the Ancient One does wake up and devours the world. Except that most of the time I don't think it is, this, that is. And that's of course for the one problem as far as the narrative is concerned with Eldritch Horror, which is that this is very much a gamey kind of game. Uh, when you lose at the end, you don't feel like, oh, I, that was a great story, it was so good when at the end we all died. You usually feel like, oh, what the fuck, uh, just, for, just because I rolled one bad dice, uh, everyone's dead. So yeah, again, that's the important thing to keep in mind. Eldritch Horror is a great narrative board game, in my opinion, if you play it with uh, like-minded people, if you have the kind of friends who are going to uh, love the irony uh, um, involved with, of course, the absurdities of chance in a game such as this, with all the tackiness of the horror in this game. At the same time, the game aspects, all these tests and all these rules which make the game so beloved by many people kind of hinder the narrative. Inevitably, they do. It's a game I would definitely, definitely suggest to anyone who is interested in this idea, who loves board games or who loves Lovecraft, especially if they love both, both things, to anyone who's nerdy enough to look at that board, which I'm still not sure you can see and feel excited about that. Um, it's not the kind of game I would suggest to anyone who, for instance, simply loves Lovecraft and fiction a lot and wants to try something. What I mean is, it's not a game such as Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, another awesome narrative board game, which I would actually suggest to everyone who likes Sherlock Holmes or whodunits in general. This doesn't necessarily mean I prefer uh, Sherlock Holmes to Eldritch Horror, I actually like Eldritch Horror more. Just keep in mind that it's a very gamey kind of game and that your stories will sometimes be amazing. I still remember the one time my friends and I saved the world from the awakening of Azatoth at uh, like two rolls of dice away from the destruction of the universe. That's one of the <laughs> most memorable nights of my life. At the same time, yeah, sometimes that won't work and it will be a bit disappointing. Let me know what you think about Eldritch Horror as a narrative board game. Remember, if you're interested in actually, you know, learning about the game as a game, to check out that review I mentioned by Shut Up and Sit Down. I'm going to put a link in a few seconds, or you'll find it in the description box. Let me know what you think about this stuff, if you like board games um, or Lovecraft or stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>